How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student. And today we're gonna to be talking about something a little bit more personal. Honestly, I've been going through a lot this last couple of months since the start of my clinical rotations in medical school. One of the big reasons why I've been going through a lot is because I've been having to go back into the closet for the first time in almost 12 years. I've been pretty open about my journey as a trans person going into medical school and going through my preclinical years in medical school and also the kinds of discrimination I've faced since applying to medical school. I made a video about what it meant to me applying to medical school as a trans person and how I didn't completely feel comfortable telling all the schools I applied to that I was trans. And I even felt that um, my dream school, it was a top 10 university, I got snubbed from getting an acceptance there because one of my interviewees that I revealed I was trans to they didn't take it really well. But even despite that, my goal since I've come out at the age of 13 has always been being my authentic self as long as I feel comfortable. And I've, I've, I've stuck through with that. Ever since I came out as 13, I have been openly queer to most of society. When it comes to coming out to my family, that's a completely different topic, but since I've come out as 13, I haven't really held back about being trans and about being queer. My sexuality has been a topic that I bring up numerous times to both higher-ups and teachers and professors because it's a huge part of my identity. It doesn't define who I am, but it is a huge part of my identity and I deserve to be respected for the identities that I have. But last August is when I started my clinical rotations as a medical student. That means I was no longer at my school. At my school, I was open, experienced quite a bit of transphobia at school, but overall, really, really, really good positive experience being openly who I am, being able to discuss being trans with faculty at my school and students at my school. But Third year of medical school, the way it works, if you don't know about it, is you rotate at different sites exploring different specialties. And at these sites, I'm assigned to a doctor. And usually these doctors are faculty of the school, but they're not involved faculty at the school. They often have their own sites that they practice in. They have their own culture at their sites. They don't have the same standards of diversity and inclusion that faculty at you know, brick and mortar school has and that's when i came to a bunch of pushback about being trans about trans patients and even from residents i got some weird comments about being trans and although a, a part of me wants to push back and be like hey i'm trans you better respect me a lot of the grades during my clinical years is less about getting a's on exams which is how it was in my preclinical years, in my first two years of medical school. I was just taking a bunch of exams, getting graded, and that's what made up most of my grade. But my clinical years, a lot, almost more than half of my grade comes from evaluations done by the doctor who's in charge. And that's where I come to the big, big predicament of if I am completely open about myself and this doctor who is evaluating me, giving me the majority of my grade, has some bias, even if it's, you know, an unconscious bias, even if they have some bias against me for being trans and that affects my grades, that will affect my chances of landing a residency spot in the specialty that I want to be in. And ideally, I would love to be in a combined medicine family medicine and psychiatry program where I can get dual certified in primary care and psychiatry. And those programs are really competitive. Most of those programs only takes two students a year. So I have a lot to lose with being open. And you might say, Ben, 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 I'm sure most doctors are inclusive, will understand and will give you a good evaluation, but that hasn't really been the case for me. Since I started, within the first months, there's been so much transphobia that I've witnessed and things said about trans patients and things said towards me that made me scared. I went into my clinical years excited, ready to you know bust it out, ready to work my butt off, ready to impress people with the amount of you know care that I can give to patients, but with also the knowledge that I have. 
But within the first month, someone made a joke about me being pregnant. I there was a there was a doctor who in a patient room was making jokes about trans people to the point patients in that room had to tell the doctor that they were being inappropriate. So within my first month, I was subject to so much transphobia that it scared me to be open about myself. It's come to the point where this is the first year in my life since coming out at 13 that the majority of people that I talk to on a day-to-day -day basis don't know that I'm trans. First time in my life since I was 13. And it's been making me a little depressed. I'm not going to lie. I feel excluded. I feel like I don't matter. I feel like my lived experience means that I'm less than human for some reason. And it infuriates me that uh, whenever I read a trans patient's charts, people constantly misgender them. There's been multiple times when that has happened and I can't even bring these issues up. And that that's what gets to me the most. I've tried to bring these issues up. I've tried to talk to people about these issues, but because I'm at the bottom of the t totem pole, nobody cares about my opinion. And if I speak up too much, I am crossing a line that and that may affect my evaluation. And even if it doesn't affect my evaluation, it can mean from having a very, very smooth and relaxing clinical experience and a certain re rotation to someone who thinks that I should have a hard time, makes me do extra scut work, extra busy work, and makes me stay 16 to 18 hours a day in the hospital because they don't like the way that I've acted. I've been doing a lot of reflection on it and some nights it's just really hard just to process like how much I've had to hide who I am these last six months and I'm going to have to keep hiding who I am until June of 2022. But I'm so looking forward to not having to do this ever again. I will never be in the closet while I'm in residency and definitely in fourth year of medical school, I'm not going to be in the closet because this is exhausting. I've never had this much mental tor turmoil since becoming an adult about people respecting my common identity. I've never been this disrespected in my entire life since I've become an, an adult. I feel like I'm 12 again where teachers were making fun of me for no reason. It's a really toxic atmosphere and it's even more toxic being a trans person of color in this field and being the only one that exists in my current institution. So it's been hard, I'm not going to lie. But once this is all over, once these evaluations are over uh, by June, I'm, I'm not doing this again. This is the only time in my adult life where I'm going to be in the closet about who I am because it's, it's put me in a really, really dark place. But it's not going to happen anymore. Anyways, I know this video was a little bit more somber than my usual cheery self, but I just felt like I needed to talk to someone about this. And unfortunately, I don't have resources out there. I mean, I can't barely afford a therapist because of the fact that I don't get enough money from school to be able to have a continued therapist, nor do I have the time to see a, to see a therapist regularly because of the hours I have to work as as a clinically rotating medical student. So thought I could just speak to the camera. Maybe someone will listen and maybe someone can relate or sympathize. And I just really wanted to share my raw experience in this video because it's, it's just been hard and I'm trying to stay positive. And I know I'll, I'll get through this, but some days are harder than others. Anyways, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed listening to me. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and shenanigans I get into. And I'll see y'all in the next video and hopefully it won't be this depressing. <laughs> Love y'all. This has been.